So today we're going to do uh, measurements of vapor pressure. We'll do the simulation. Uh, it was done by Professor Bertrand at Missouri S and T University. Uh, let's see. HTTP uh, web dot mst dot edu slash tilde gbert slash p vap slash capital ap vap dot html okay and this is a simulation of the isotelescope method for measuring the vapor pressure of liquids so isotelescope this thing right here is your isotelescope what you're going to do is you're going to put a liquid in here okay so you're going to put liquid in here and uh and liquid in here so you have a liquid there and a liquid there and then this thing right here is a heater so once it heats your and you have your uh your system is hooked up to a vacuum pump okay so this one pulls a vacuum and this side right here is open to a pressure gauge so you can monitor the pressure on this side okay You can monitor the pressure on this side. And what you'll have is you'll have a liquid here, same liquid here and in this tube right here. And you'll notice the whole thing is immersed in the water bath. That as ensures that the total, the temperature is uniform throughout your system. So here you have a gas in equilibrium with your liquid, okay? And so the pressure of that gas at a given temperature is going to be the vapor pressure of the liquid. First thing you need to do is you're going to heat this up so that you can you can get rid of any air bubbles that you may have in there. Any air that's in your system, you'll need to bubble out. And so the only thing you'll have in there is a pure gas of whatever liquid you're putting in, pure vapor of whatever liquid you're putting in. Okay, so let me illustrate how that's done. Uh, so you can monitor the pressure on the outside right here with this pressure gauge. And uh, by the way, this thing right here, okay, this is a condenser. You have water running through that condenser to cool your vapor here, okay? And here's your thermometer. Monitors the temperature of your water bath. And so that's going to be the temperature of your system, entire system. So if you click on heater, uh, let's first pick a liquid. Pick your liquid, let's say you pick methanol. Okay, so you're introducing a liquid now. And so here's your liquid. Okay. And so this was opened up, and this part right here was opened up to introduce the liquid. Introduce the liquid there. And there's your liquid right here, shown in gray. And now you clamp it back on. All right, so what's the first thing we need to do? You need to pump out all the air from your liquid, right? So you heat it up, so you turn the heater on, So and you turn on the vacuum. So if you click it, click on, heater is on, okay? And so your gas, your air is bubbling out, and so will some of your gas. It's being pumped. And now, it's going to start to cool, all right? So once it cools down, what's going to happen? You're going to close this pump, okay? And as this thing cools down, okay, this this level is going to drop. When the levels are at the same on both, when your liquids are at the same level on both sides of this tube, U-shaped tube right here, then the pressure of the gas in here will be equal to the pressure that's being measured on the other side. So to record the pressure of the gas, what you need to do is hit the space bar. Okay. Now, as soon as you've measured the pressure of the gas, so as soon as the two liquid levels on both sides of the, the U-tube are, 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 are leveled off, what you need to do is turn the pump back on. Okay, And you turn the pump back, back on by just pressing any key. Okay, So you turn on the pump, you just open up your stopcock here. Oops. You open up this stopcock. 
to your uh, to your palm and you do that by just pressing any key if you hit the space bar hit the space bar to record so watch these liquid levels right here once they're matched and okay, once your liquid levels are matched then you hit the space bar to record it, the temperature the, that would be the temperature you'd be recording the temperature and temperature and the vapor pressure at that point okay so let me illustrate that I'm gonna hit OK now. So, look, the thing is dropping. I just hit the space bar, and then any key will pump it back up, and then wait for it to settle down again. And then once the liquid levels are the same, hit the space bar again, and then any key, okay, any key to pump it back up. Every time you hit the space bar, you record the pressure and the temperature. So you get um you, you get to monitor the vapor pressure versus temperature using an isotoniscope. So space bar, okay, pump it down again. As it cools down, the level goes down, hit the space bar. Okay. Space bar, pump down, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to stop this experiment now. And so once you've collected your data, all you have to do is copy this to Excel. And you have pressure versus temperature, vapor pressure versus temperature. What kind of information can you get from vapor pressure versus temperature? We just talked about this earlier in class today in the lecture. Delta H of vaporization, remember? Uh, uh, LN, LN of P2 over P1 equals negative delta H vaporization over R, 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. But in this case, you have more than just two data points. You actually have more, a lot more data points. So what do you have to do in this case? You just say ln of P minus, okay, minus ln of P1 equals minus delta H over R, 1 over T minus 1 over T1. And you can lump all the constants together. You're going to say ln of p equals negative delta h over r, 1 over t, plus a constant. Okay, so this ln p1 and 1 over t1, I'm just going to lump them all together. Oops, I'm sorry, I forgot there should be a delta h over here over r, right? So that's going to be plus delta h over r t1. I have to distribute this. Okay. So if you were to plot ln of p on your y-axis and 1 over t on your x-axis, what would be your slope? Just like for the two-point case, your slope is delta h over, negative delta h over r, and then what's your y-intercept? Whatever that c is, okay? That would be your y. You're interested here in your delta h, so your goal for this is to determine the delta h vaporization. It will just be equal to negative r times the slope of your plot. So you're going to plot L and P versus 1 over T. Okay? And when you're done with this, you can compare your values with the literature value. You can search uh, at webbook.nist.gov. So you go to webbook.nist.gov and click on NIST Chemistry Webbook. Enter the formula of the compound that's been assigned to you. So, for example, if you want to search for methanol CH3OH, okay, and then select gas phase, condensed phase, and phase change data. Since we're interested in phase changes, search. 
And let's see, this is methanol right here. If you scroll down, you'll find your formula for the delta H uh, uh, for vapor pressure. Okay. Phase change data. Here's your phase change data. You got your normal boiling point. Okay. Right here. And what else do you have here? Enthalpy of vaporization at the boiling point. Okay. And what else do you have? You can do, uh, you can, it actually tells you how your delta H is depends on temperature. Okay. But when you're using the, when you're using the clausius clapeyron equation to when, when you're plotting LNP versus 1 over T, you're assuming your delta H is constant over that temperature interval you're, you're, you're studying, okay? Uh, the Antoine equation right here, okay? Log of P is A minus B over T plus C. The parameters A, B, and C for the different temperature ranges that you're using, depending on what temperature range you're using, these are tabulated. So these are literature values of vapor pressure versus temperature. So that's a good way for you to compare the quality of the data you're getting from this simulation, okay? And there's the primary references there for your uh, for your vapor pressure data, okay? So what you'll need to do is we'll assign uh, liquids to everyone, different liquids. So I've done the methanol. So let's say me, you do ethanol. Who you do and propanol. Sydney, you're doing isopropanol. Kayla, and butanol. Catherine, you'll do isobutanol. John, sec butanol. Uh, Joe, T butanol. And we're out of alcohol, so um, <laughs> James, you get to do cyclohexane. Well, why don't you do methanol? So let's just do an alcohol thing. Okay. All right. So James, you're doing methanol. All right. So that's it for this uh, simulation.